On May 1, 2015, a Cougar helicopter of the Mexican Air Force was downed by grenade launchers in Jalisco, using tactics similar to those employed by terrorist groups in the Middle East. This attack resulted in the tragic loss of eight military personnel and a federal police officer. Five years later, on June 26, 2020, Omar Garcia Harfuch, Mexico City's public security secretary, survived an assassination attempt on a main road of the city. He was ambushed by heavily armed men, but the attempt ultimately failed. In states like Jalisco, Michoacan, and Veracruz, police and National Guard officers face weekly attacks and kidnappings. All of these violent acts have been carried out by the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, or CJNG, Mexico's most ruthless criminal organization that has posed a significant challenge to the government over the past decade. But who's the mastermind behind this powerful cartel? No other than Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, also known as El Mencho, a former local police officer in Jalisco who transformed into a brutal kingpin. His criminal organization expanded rapidly throughout Mexico and even across five continents. The CJNG threatens Mexico's democracy through corruption, massacres, and constant intimidation of civilians, engaging in illegal activities such as drug trafficking, gasoline theft, business extortion, and human smuggling. The CJNG reportedly amasses a staggering annual revenue of $20 billion, according to Mexican government investigations. The organization doesn't hesitate to silence its critics and has been linked to the disappearances of several journalists and social media influencers in Mexico. But what is the backstory of El Mencho? What are his origins? And how did he ascend to become one of the world's most powerful criminals? In this episode of Illicit Investigations, we delve into the life of Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, aka El Mencho, once a teenage marijuana grower in Michoacan who migrated to California and became a member of a Latin gang in the Bay Area. Following his deportation to Mexico, he became a police officer and eventually transitioned to a cartel leader. His organization rapidly expanded, gaining territory and power at a record time in Mexico's history. Brace yourself to witness this eye-opening story. A phone call that took place in 2016 between Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, the leader of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, and a police commander in the Mexican state of Jalisco, shed light on the corrupting influence wielded by this criminal organization and showcased the exceptionally violent nature of El Mencho. During the call, El Mencho instructed a commander named Leon to withdraw his agents, allowing his sicarios to conduct their operations without interference. Delta Uno. Hey, ¿quién habla? Mira bien, hijo de tu puta madre. Soy Mencho, güey. Relaja tus putas partidas, si no te voy a partir tu madre, tienes toda tu bola de perros. Te tengo identificado 30 güeyes. Hasta tus putos perros te voy a matar si no te relajas, güey. Ya está, señor, ahorita los va. Under Mencho's leadership, the CJNG orchestrated widespread violence across almost every Mexican state. Alongside its brutal conflict with the government, the organization is simultaneously engaged in multi-front hostilities against rival cartels such as the Zetas, the Sinaloa Cartel, and the Santa Rosa de Lima Cartel. These conflicts aimed at securing dominance over strategic plazas and drug trafficking routes. In 2009, prior to the formation of the CJNG, the state of Jalisco recorded 1,644 cases of disappearances. By 2022, this alarming figure had surged to 14,889. Similarly, homicide rates experienced a stark escalation. In 2009, the entire state registered 681 murders, but a decade later in 2022, this figure had tripled to 1,845. These statistics illustrate the violence perpetrated by El Mencho and underscore the reasons why the United States offers a $10 million reward for information leading to his arrest. Currently, El Mencho remains as one of the most wanted criminals on Earth. In the 2000s, the Millennio Cartel, under the leadership of Oscar Nava Valencia, also known as El Lobo or The Wolf, established a strategic alliance with the Sinaloa Cartel faction led by Ignacio Nacho Coronel. This collaboration aimed to facilitate the reception of drug shipments through the ports of Lazardo Cardenas in Michoacan and Manzanillo in Colima, using the state of Jalisco as a corridor and storage hub for their operations. During this period, El Mencho and his brother-in-law, Abigail Gonzalez Valencia, held prominent positions within the Millennial Cartel. However, in October of 2009, El Lobo was arrested, and several months later, Nacho Coronel was taken down in Guadalajara by the Mexican army. 
Following these events, the Milenio cartel experienced an internal division, splitting into two factions, Los Torcidos and La Resistencia. El Mencho assumed leadership of Los Torcidos, who were considered traitors for their involvement in the surrender of El Lobo to Mexican authorities. The primary objective of El Mencho was to oust the Zetas from Jalisco, which is why the group was initially referred to as Los Matazetas or the Zeta Killers. El Mencho had two key lieutenants, Eric Valencia, also known as L-85, and Martin Arzola Ortega, known as L-53. Simultaneously, his brother-in-law, Abigail Gonzalez Valencia, established a faction named Los Cuinas, serving as the financial and money laundering arm of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. This group holds a significant amount of influence, particularly due to the involvement of El Mencho's wife, Rosalinda Gonzalez Valencia. The CJNG evolved into an exceedingly violent entity, rapidly expanding its influence to cities throughout Mexico that were formerly under the control of the Zetas. This expansion brought forth a wave of bloodshed and terror. The group claimed responsibility for a massacre in 2011, where 35 individuals in Veracruz were killed, alleged to be affiliated with the Zetas. In April 2015, the CJNG orchestrated an ambush in Jalisco, resulting in the death of 15 Mexican police officers. This event stands as one of the deadliest attacks on security forces in recent Mexican history. The CJNG has also been involved in high-profile attacks against public officials. In May 2018, the group attempted to assassinate Luis Carlos Najera, the former security secretary of Jalisco. In June 2020, they made a bold attempt to kill Omar Garcia Harfuch, Mexico City's public security secretary. During that same month, a judge in the western state of Colima, who had presided over various cases against members of the cartel, was killed along with his wife. El Mencho is known for his intolerance towards critics. The CJNG has been implicated in the assassinations of journalists like Armando Linares Lopez in Michoacan in 2022. The group was also linked to the murder of El Pirata de Culiacan, a 17-year-old social media influencer from Sinaloa who offended El Mencho in one of his videos in Jalisco in 2017. The Mexican government accuses the CJNG of burying its victims in clandestine graves that have been discovered in several states. One such grave was found in El Salto, Jalisco, where 113 bodies were discovered in November 2020. According to a Mexican intelligence report, the CJNG is the primary purchaser of arms originating from the United States. El Mencho Sicarios are consistently seen equipped with the latest rifle technology and protective vests. The Mencho Special Forces, one of the largest units within the CJNG, operates in Jalisco, Michoacan, and Guanajuato. This unit has been observed showcasing brand new military equipment and monster trucks. This video is not in Syria. It shows a drone attack of the CJNG to the Pueblos Unidos cartel in Michoacan. El Mencho's criminal organization is so powerful that it is currently engaged in battles on multiple fronts against rival cartels for control of key territories such as Guanajuato, Zacatecas, Baja California, Chihuahua, Michoacan, and Tamaulipas. El Mencho is the king of the methamphetamine empire in Mexico. He commands the largest production and distribution network of methamphetamines in the country, and he exercises control over the ports of Lazaro Cardenas, Manzanillo, and Veracruz to receive precursor chemicals from India and China for the drug's production. Moreover, he has established drug routes extending to Europe, Australia, and Asia, engaging in direct competition with the Sinaloa cartel. In Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru, El Mencho has established offices to coordinate the shipment of cocaine to Mexico and other countries. The CJNG has made significant investments in submarines, utilizing them to transport narcotics from South America. Russian naval engineers were even recruited to aid in the design of these submarines. Additionally, El Mencho has expanded his operations to include the production of fentanyl, which he traffics to the U.S. through cities like Tijuana, Ciudad Juarez, and Reynosa. In 2020, the DEA launched Project Python, a large-scale operation aimed at dismantling CJNG's activities in the United States. This effort resulted in 600 arrests and 350 indictments. However, CJNG remains far from weakened. At every opportunity, El Mencho continues to showcase his power and exceedingly aggressive personality. On August 15, 2016, at La Leche restaurant in Puerto Vallarta, Jalisco, two of the Chapitos, Ivan Archivaldo and Jesus Alfredo, who are the sons of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, were abducted by a CJNG commando under the orders of El Mencho. This message was clear, this territory belongs to him.
The original intent was to eliminate them, but El Chapo managed to negotiate with El Mencho from a prison in Mexico prior to his extradition to the U.S. Ismael El Mayo Zambada played a role in facilitating this agreement, leading to the eventual release of the Chapitos. Embracing his Michoacan roots fully, El Mencho likes playing volleyball and finds his greatest pleasure in cockfighting. His moniker of the Lord of the Roosters was earned due to his willingness to place bets as high as $500,000 on the roosters bred in his hatcheries. Born on July 17, 1966, in the community of Naranjo de Chila, Michoacan, El Mencho grew up amidst avocado trees in the municipality of Aguililla. At the age of 14, he left school to work as a marijuana crop guard, assisting his parents in raising his five siblings. However, like numerous young Mexicans hailing from rural areas, he made the journey north and crossed into the United States unlawfully. His relatives in California were waiting for him, but instead of taking up farming, he became entwined in criminal activities through the Norteños, a Latin gang originated in the Bay Area. At 20 years old, he was arrested in San Francisco for robbery and gun possession. He soon ventured into narcotic sales alongside his brother-in-law, Abigail Gonzalez Valencia. Two years later, he was arrested once more, leading to his deportation to Mexico. In the following months, he re-entered the U.S. irregularly. In 1992, he was apprehended again, this time along with his brother Abraham, for distributing heroin. After serving a three-year term in a federal prison in Texas, he was deported to Mexico, where he joined the police force in the municipalities of Cabo Corrientes and Tomatlan in Jalisco. Yet, his affinity for crime persisted, and just past his 30th birthday, he became linked to the Millennio Cartel, which his brother-in-law Abigail Gonzalez Valencia, known as El Cuini, was also a part of. El Mencho tied the knot with Rosalinda Gonzalez Valencia, also known as La Jefa, with whom he had three children in the United States. Ruben, the second-in-command of the CJNG, was arrested in Jalisco in 2015 and extradited to the U.S. in 2020, where he remains incarcerated. Another daughter of El Mencho, Jessica Johanna, faced money laundering charges during a hearing for her brother Ruben in Washington, D.C. in 2020. She pleaded guilty and is currently free. El Mencho's youngest daughter, Laisha Michelle, resides in Jalisco and has distanced herself from her father's business. Presently, El Mencho's wife is incarcerated in Morelos, facing money laundering accusations by Mexican authorities. According to her legal representatives, she is grappling with a terminal illness. El Mencho has never been apprehended in Mexico, and he eludes capture by hiding in the mountains of Jalisco, Michoacan, and Colima. His primary security circle comprises ex-guerrilla members from the now-dissolved Colombian terrorist group FARC. Most members of his cartel have never laid eyes on him, deeming him a spectral presence. Mexican intelligence reports suggest that El Mencho grapples with diabetes and kidney problems, requiring frequent visits to this hospital he built in a town of Jalisco. This is Illicit Investigations. Subscribe now to our channel to go beyond the headlines.